Hi, today I'm going to show you how to make the Gears animation in Blender 3D featured on my channel. First off, you got to delete the starter cube. Then add a cylinder. Make sure that cylinder has 20, oops, wrong number, 20 vertices. So it has like a face, kind of like more polygon like, if that's a word. Scale it down on a z-axis until you have a kind of a disc. Go for about there. Go into edit mode and hit. Okay. Select each face. Each one kind of like like in a pattern, like one on, one off, one on, one off. You'll see why I'm doing this. Hold shift while you're doing this so you don't deselect all of them on a single click. Now hit E to extrude, but don't measure anything. If you do, hit zero to re revert it back to nothing. Scale it S. Uh, where well, I'll say about there, wherever you like, however you want the teeth to look. Then go and select everything. Hopefully, yeah, okay, it's out of mode. You don't have to worry about that. And subdivide it once. Now this is if you want the, like the there's like a groove, like a rim on the area around here. Oh, I just gotta find this. Gotta remember these, uh. I know it's. Yes, W. Just W, not control W. Subdivide. There you go. So, subdividing this makes it all look more complicated, but it really isn't. Because in the end, it's only this here, this ring, and this ring. The outer ring and the ring that's been made in the inside. So, deselect everything and hit Alt Shift right click. And hopefully, Alt Shift, oh, sorry, Alt Shift right click. You have to go back into a vertex mode after you go into faces mode. You did that unconsciously, but in order to pull these out, you gotta hit this faces button. Sorry if that's a problem if when you're trying to do this. And yeah, that's a problem. Hold up. There. Okay, so you, you have to be very close to this and maybe even inside the circle because it seems to want to grab everything in its path. So just kind of click to get this circle in here. Then scale it to form the rim. Click, go into front view, hit Z if you really want to see what's inside, and then extrude, click, grab on the z-axis and pull down to get the rim. So you can see if I go back into solid mode that there's a depth to it. I, um, just call it a rim. Simplify things. Now you go into object mode and you can see this whole thing and just even render it. There. Good. Looks nice. Has any shadowing, whatever. It ain't exactly textured yet. For that, you want to find like a free must, free rusty metal texture is the one I use, which is like a thousand, like, if you just type metal in Google, metal texture, you'll have like endless like textures they use to put onto this object. Really, it's actually pretty simple. Oops. You have to make a new material for it. Then hit image or movie. Oh, I'm probably messing you all up. So sorry. Alright. But anyways, go and I am going to find this pretty musty a thousand photos. Hold on a second. This is gonna take a while. Bear with me. I know what it Hi, there we go. So 
now that we got this free rusty texture, we can render it and you see the texture has been applied onto the gear. So, after we've done that, we gotta get to the animation of the gear. To do that, we hit this. Uh, I'll explain something first. You're gonna have to make two animations one that rotates clockwise and one counterclockwise. To do that, you gotta make 2D gears. Two gears. Oops, better do this precision. Shift D on X axis. There we go. Alright. One is gonna rotate 90 degrees for every 30 frames. Now I'm just gonna show you so you understand. Hit I to insert a keyframe and a rotation. Hit up on it would be like the arrow keys, yes, arrow keys, three times. And I'm going to show you the negative thing first. So you hit R for rotate, negative 90. Insert keyframe, rotation, one, two, three. R for rotate, negative 90. Now keep doing this for as long as you want your animation to be. I'm just going to do this for three of them. Three of them. So you can tell you see it's spinning this way, clockwise. Oh, I made a dirt mistake there. Did I? Okay. So one, two, three. Rotate negative 90. Rotate negative 90. Start keyframe. Okay. Good. One, two, three. Well, that's just two. That's the starting one. That's nice. Rotate negative 90. Start keyframe. Rotation. Okay, you see it rotates. That's nice. So now for this one, you want to do the opposite in a sense. You want to have it to go up three frames. First we have send in the rotation. Three frames. <laughs> well, that's kind of a tongue twister. And insert... Oh, no. Rotate negative 90. Nope. Correction. See, I said it so many times I almost did it myself. Rotate 90. That's the opposite part here. So it looks like the gears are pushing off each other. Now hit rotation and basically do the same in reverse. Alright, so when you kind of move backwards, you see that the gears seem to push off each other and move seem to move each other. Sometimes just on the way you make the gears it will look like they kind of merge because the animations overlap the meshes. So I'm just gonna put them right corner corner incredibly close so you could basically kind of bear with me so I mean you can say well it's gonna slip. Well it's not. It's the animation. You make it whatever. I'm gonna want to save it and I'm gonna save it as uh, tut, because I'm probably going to delete this right after. Tut. There we go. Now, you can just make the animation by going into the camera option, or the render option, and make sure this end frame is 91, I think my animation length is. How do I get a three in there? 91. Okay. Now, hit animation. I'm just going to see. Uh, I'll make it a uh, AVI raw. Why not? Now, I am going to do like the lowest quality imaginable just to hurry up the process to the animation. And then I'm going to hit the render button and it will start animating. 
and you just wait a while and then you have your animation. I hope this is a help. This is my first tutorial so you have to bear with me with my mistakes and all that. And I also did this in one shoot so I had a lot of re remakes, reduns, bloopers, whatever you want to call them. Cuts. So I hope this was helpful and have a good day.